Welcome to the Larson Davis Sound Advisor Model 831C Sound Level Meter Quick Start video. First I'm going to go through a basic setup and then we're going to do our first run. So first I'm going to open up the box. We're going to take a look at all the contents. Here we have the Quick Start Guide. Yours might be a little bit bigger. It kind of leads you through some of the main steps. G4 software so you can run your meter remotely on a PC. You can download that on our website as well. You don't need to keep the CD. It also has our manuals on it. And these are your calibration certificates. Uh, the first thing is our 3.5 inch windscreen. goes on the top of your microphone. keeps it safe out in the elements. Here are all your wires and connections and your adapters for international outlets. A lanyard for handheld use. And our Wi-Fi dongle, a little TP link. I'll show you how to install that in a moment. Now here's our preamplifier, our pre-RM 831. And our last accessory is our microphone. You can always store them back in their cases keep them safe and dust free. Now here is the whole reason we're here, Sound Advisor 831C SLM. It's got the blue grips, it's got blue feet, and here's the back with all of your information. Now your batteries will be separate in the box, but they will be fully charged and ready to install. They are nickel metal hydride batteries, and your meter is all set to charge them once your meter is installed to an external battery source. Okay, so let's do our connections first. I'm going to set some things to the side so we'll have everything all ready. Let's do our preamplifier and our microphone. Our preamplifier is this longer one. We're going to remove it from the case and we'll also get our microphone out of the case all ready to go. Now you need to be gentle with these. Not too gentle, but definitely don't be aggressive. Let's take off the rubber cap. You'll see that's the top of our preamplifier. And then the microphone, the bottom of the microphone, goes on the top of the preamplifier. Now don't put them directly on. Set it to the side and bend it down so you don't end up damaging anything. And then you twist it together and put your fingers on the two lines on the microphone that were etched in, kind of show you where to pull it so to where to twist it so you're not and so you don't end up twisting the grid cap off the grid cap is on the other side over here right there don't don't unscrew that so there's a vertical line etched onto the bottom of our preamplifier and it shows where to align with the arrow on our 831c you just push the two together you might hear a small click if it's quiet where you are here's your wi-fi dongle We'll turn it where it kind of appears upside down, and then you'll install it right here on our USB auxiliary port. You can also put a hub in there and attach all sorts of USB accessories. Here's our mini USB cord. Um, we're going to install this. This will be a good way to install it, to connect it to a PC, or to connect it to an external power source. Alright, so let's get started. We're going to press the on-off button. If you noticed, it was already lit because we were connected to a power source. It was showing that it was being charged. Our startup screen takes about one full minute. Our stop-store button is lit to show that a measurement is not currently running. Alright, so when we start up, we're going to first go to the live screen and then I press tools. And then I went down to system properties. And this screen's a little bright for this video. I'm going to keep our backlights on so I don't lose you. And I'm not going to use our LCD brightness. I'm going to go over one page using the top right soft key. And 
First I'm going to change out the AC output, I had that on earlier. And I'm going to go down to color theme. Here is the dark color theme, much better. A little nicer on the eyes. You go to dark one, light one, dark two, or light two. But I'm going to go back over to dark. I like the way that looks. And while we're here, I'm going to move over to locale. And set my language. I'm an English speaker, so we'll stay here. And I want to change my date format to be day, month, year. So I'm going to use the arrow keys, the bottom one. We'll move our cursor down. And there we go. I'm going to close, and it's going to ask to save our changes, and yes. So we're going to do our calibration next. Go to Tools and Calibrate. For the drop-down menu, I'm going to choose my Cal 250, because that's the calibrator that I'm using. Here it is. I'm going to press the button and put it on top of the microphone. It fits snugly, because there's an O-ring in there. I'm going to move my cursor down to Do Calibration, and press Enter. I'm going to reset the filters for a minute here. And we have a 0.4 dB difference. I'm going to save it by saying yes. And we're going to close the menu. It's good to calibrate if you change environments or just before any big run. So we're going to go over here to log screen to show that our calibration was logged and it will save in that measurement that we'll do next unless we do a reset then it'll clear the session log. I'm going to go over to the live uh, big digit page. I want to show you the area LAF. If I press enter I can choose any of these other weightings. LEQ is a good one. So we're about 40 dB. I've got a, like a library set up here. I clicked a couple times in the microphone got it up to 85. I'm going to come over here to overall and do our first run. The data starts to store. You can see at the top our run is going. We have our run pause key that's lit. Everything looks like it's doing really well. I'm going to go through these pages. Here's our big digit for our overall. It's at the LA peak, which so far has been 52 since we started the run. Here's our octave band pages. 1 over 3 octave, you can move your cursor around, see what the data is on those certain octave bands. You can also press enter to jump your cursor around on the page. Since the up and down arrow keys are used for going to different pages. These are LN percentiles, lots of data that we can look at depending on what you want for your measurement. Exceedances, overloads, community noise information, impulsivity, TMR sound exposure levels, and weather, if we had a weather station attached, which I don't today. Here's more metrics that we have, our memory, and our date. So you see we have lots of data. So first we're going to go look at our setup Wi-Fi while our measurement is running. You can do lots of things on the meter while it's running. I'm set to access point right now. I could access my meter with my phone or with G4. But I'm going to go over here and refresh the list so I get out of access point and I can start looking at the Wi-Fi in the area. My office, I have a lot of HVM 200s, so they'll most likely pop up here. And they do. So let's go ahead and close that. We're not going to attach our meter to any of those. We can go here to communication, where if I was connected, we could see our IP address and we could connect through there. Let's go over to tools and look at our setup. Again, we're running, so if we changed anything in our setup, it would prompt us to reset our run. But we're not going to change anything. We're just going to look at the pages here. So th these are the metrics that are currently being measured. Run a normal OBA range. Here are LN percentiles that I showed you earlier. Here's our run modes. We're at manual stop, but we have lots of options. I don't have time history going or event history or triggers. Those are triggers you can set. There's email and text alerts. Here are markers. Our day-night times for community noise. Our sound, which we could record sound. And weather, if I had a weather station attached. So 
We didn't do anything, so it's not going to ask us to save anything. The next thing that we need to do is stop and store our measurement. So I'm going to press stop. You'll see the red box up in the top. And then if I press again, it'll ask to store using a default data name. I have it stored both on the meter and my USB. So that is the 831C.